Hello everybody, how are you doing? My name is Charlie. You might know me better as Sci-Fi Fantasy Writer, C. Dorset. And I don't know what that accent is, it just happened. I wish I could say I was heavily medicated, but uh, that would not be true. Um, I pushed off recording this episode a while today for several reasons. One, I was hoping to find something happy to talk about. And two, if I sound weird, my allergies are going crazy. So yeah, there's that. And I'm having a lot of leg pain today. So I'm going to try not to sniffle too much. And I'm going to try to uh, get through everything. Because today's topic is not a happy one. And it's just... uh, I I don't know where to start with this problem. Because I've seen it happen over and over and over again with so many different things. So I'm, I'm going to start here. I am trans... I, I am, let's just say gender queer right now, gender fluid. I am gay. I'm also white. And I point these things out because I understand some of the instincts I'm going to be talking about when I see gay characters or trans characters portrayed in media. I, I understand that. I, 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 I get the emotions. I understand how emotions can really run high. And for a beloved property, I can understand having emotions about it maybe not going the way that you might want it to. As I've said many times on this podcast, I am a fan of the Alien movies. I've gotten two good ones, and the last one was in 1986. We're now up to, what, six or eight, depending on how you count. Because, yeah, Prometheus and the Alien vs. Predator things... Yeah, I have two. There are two. There's between six and eight movies, and I have two that I like. So I I understand when a fandom is not behaving in a way that you want. I really do. I understand that a lot. (laughs) This is not just that fandom. There are several that I participate in that have not been good for a while, like Batman. But anywho, and I understand when your identity comes into play how that can... I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. That's why I'm equivocating so much here at the beginning. And I don't want to talk about specifics because I think that's where this conversation always gets lost. So I'm going to introduce this with the most recent incident of this and then fly away from it as fast as I can. So the, as you know, we've discussed on the show, the new trailer for Crimes of Grindelwald is out and There are a lot of people very upset at the reveal about Nagini. And I would put a lot of these people in the well-meaning camp. Um, I'm not going to name names because that's not important. I I understand everything that people are saying and the references that are being made. And I am probably not the right person to be having this conversation. Though I actually try to have it with my trans and gay friends all the time because we are very good at overreacting. And I'm not saying that this is necessarily overreacting. What I am saying is the movie isn't out yet. And I know I I am kind of, I guess, infamous for trying to give things the benefit of the doubt. Even that... M. Night Shyamalan wreck of an Avatar movie, I got really upset at the casting, but I thought to myself, surely an Indian director couldn't be racist. I reacted. I was upset. I did go see the movie. I did not enjoy the movie. And honestly, even without the race bending thing, it wasn't a good movie. I, I have participated in this rage. I have. This is part of what should be a series on the podcast of repenting for my fandom sins. Because yes, yeah, sometimes as with the, when, when, when we saw that they weren't re, that the characters were not being reflected in the casting, that was a huge sign that the avatar film was not going to be good. And I get 
that everyone is very sensitive about a lot of things right now. But there's two things that I have to say on this. One, fandom should keep its identity free from all of this contamination. And what I mean by that is a film is not going to hurt you unless it's Triumph of the Wills. Um, you know, if Lenny Riefenstahl or someone like her isn't making it, you know, it's... It, I mean, there are propaganda films that are sincerely dangerous. So I'm not... I would never make the argument that no film can hurt you. But a fantasy movie about wizards waving wands around while big magical creatures run through the cities of Paris and who knows where else we're going to go in this film. They're not coming for you. And I, I feel really weird saying this because I'm, I'm, I am personally upset about many things coming in the crimes of Grindelwald. Though I do have to say in the last trailer, they did while they inflamed other people, they made me feel better because at least you can see in the mirror when Dumbledore looks in the mirror, he sees Grindelwald. So maybe they are going to address some of the stuff that they said they weren't going to. But again, I'm I don't want this to be specific. Trailers are trailers. Our trailers are trailers. Eight. The purpose of a trailer is to market a product. The purpose of all of these leaks and all of this information that's coming out is to market the product. Okay? Boycotts. Unless they're advertiser boycotts, don't work. They, they do not have a history of actually working, except for on television, where if you can get enough advertisers to feel that, they, that you are going to punish their products for advertising on a certain show, they will often pull out. Beyond that, boycotts tend more often than not to raise attention for the thing that is being boycotted. Um, they don't help. I want them to help. I really do. But they don't. And I think we really need to be careful here, especially... I, I want to talk to my liberal sisters and brothers out there, because this really has to deal with us. This is a problem that we have. And don't get me wrong, my Christian brothers and sisters, y'all got a problem too, but that's a different episode, and I'll talk to y'all later. But when you have... Okay, your outrage about an event needs to be proportional to the event. And yes, a Harry Potter film or a Wizarding World film is a major cultural touchstone, and it is important. But what we need to start realizing is that by having that reaction to what is ostensibly a children's movie, it cheapens the actual message we're trying to get across. And I mean this earnestly. I live... In America's heartland, I live in a red, red state. We are one of the few states that might go even redder this year and fight the blue wave, which is upsetting. I live in Missouri. I talk to a lot of very conservative people way too regularly. And I don't know whose minds you're wanting to change by discussing these very important issues. I'm not trying to say the issues themselves are not important. But when you try to discuss these issues around a Harry Potter film, many of the people that need to hear and understand that message and understand inclusivity and understand representation, all they see is liberals freaking out at a children's movie. And it cheapens our arguments. It makes us look like we're... It makes us look like the special snowflakes they like to parody us as. And that is a bigger problem than whatever the feelings about Nagini are or about anything. <laughs> if, they, if you legitimize the others as not seeing your points as relevant because you're freaking out about a children's movie, then those concerns get put in the bucket next to the children's movie as irrelevant and not important. And I know we need to find the right times to talk about them. And yes, this is this does appear to be a cultural moment that would be a good time to talk about these things. I get that. I understand that. I feel your pain. There are a lot of things that I want to be railing about this movie on. But the point is, I know how that looks because I hear it when I go into town. 
and I talk to people who think that we lefties are just cuckoo for Cocoa Puff and looking for something to rage about. I'm not saying that this is right. I'm not saying that this is the... I, I, I'm just trying to speak as if somebody on the ground level in the middle of a red state surrounded by Trump voters. This is the wrong way to get the message across. It makes us sound crazy to them. And yes, I get the arguments that we shouldn't care what they have to think. I get that. But if we're going to do the that thing that we need to do to actually win some of these culture war things, that's win hearts and minds. Making them think we're crazy doesn't accomplish that. Making them think that we are special snowflakes who were triggered by a children's movie doesn't do that. I'm not, I don't agree with them. I think that any major cultural moment is a proper time to have this conversation. I'm just trying to share what I'm hearing in the larger conversation. And I think a lot, I know with some of my friends that live on the East Coast or the West Coast, they are surrounded by more liberal minded people. And there's an echo chamber there that reinforces a lot of these thoughts that, yes, we should champion this. Yes, we should go after this. Well, of course, that's a good point. And I'm not disagreeing with a lot of the points that I've heard. I've heard some that get a little ludicrous, but they weren't by people in the community that are actually affected. So I, I there's part of me that wonders if they were trolls trying to ape the conversation because they were just crazy. But we have to be careful. We, uh, I had a long talk about this online the other day, and I've kind of talked about this on the podcast before. But the appearance that we put forward as a community is almost as important as the message that we want to give. And that is a horrible thing. It's a terrible thing. And I'm not saying that we should change everything about who we are so that we can conform to this society that we're in or any of that. I'm not trying to be one of those people. I am against heteronormalization. I am against all of that. I'm just, you have to understand optics. And there are two things working against us in these situations. One, attacking a children's movie, whether you think you're doing the right thing or not makes the message seem funny to the people who need to hear it. It makes the message seem suspect to the very people who need to hear it. And number two, attacking a film that's not even out yet that we haven't seen that we don't know what the message of it is. I'm not saying that we need to always give these people the benefit of the doubt. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is, it's We don't want to be like the alt-right. Now, let me explain that. You can hear the angry comments coming. Okay, so look, I have watched and listened to a lot of people attacking The Last Jedi who have seen nothing but the trailers. They claim to have seen the movies. They claim to be intimately involved with Star Wars. They claim to have seen the film and get major plot points from the film wrong. And I don't mean like minor plot points, like what was Luke's last words, because they're not in the movie. I'm not talking about little things like that. I'm talking about like major plot points wrong, because they didn't see the movie and they extrapolated from what they saw in the trailers and what other people had written about it. Some of those people who had not even seen it. And whatever their arguments might have been, I can't take them seriously. Because it's obvious they don't know what they're talking about. And I'm sure a lot of you don't think I know what I'm talking about right now. Because it's just the disease that's eating our culture. But you have, you have to at least, for a moment, consider how the type of outrage that we, we are putting out reverberates in the greater culture. Because frankly, and look, I, I, I'm an ally in this. Like... I get all kinds of messed up on the inside. Like, I stopped writing a book series of mine because I couldn't find anyone of a particular Native American tribe that I could afford to pay to help me understand and vet some of the ideas I had because the story kind of required the tribe to be in the story or it wouldn't make sense. So I actually stopped an entire series because I couldn't get 
a source within the actual community to help me understand so I don't do something wrong. So I, I, I get that. I'm, I, I, I get it. I, I get a lot of the concerns that are out there. But I also have to say that I live in a red state. I know I keep saying this over and over again. And if you don't live in a red state, the way arguments are constructed here are different. And they are so much more related to the optics of a situation than off of the reality of the situation. Where I could see, especially on Twitter, the pain and upset in a lot of the people who were commenting initially in there. I know from people that I talked to how silly they saw, saw it to take a children's movie seriously. And I get, I get it, I get it. But it is very difficult to get a heterosexual, cisgendered white man, or sometimes even a cisgendered, heterosexual white woman, to understand the experience of anyone that is not one, one or a combination of those things. And if we are going to be successful in any of the things that we are wanting to do going forward, as far as acceptance, as far as diversity, as far as representation in this media, we have to win them over. And I'm not saying that I know the best ways to do it. You know me, I'm not that kind of person. I don't like to make those kinds of statements because I don't, I think if any of, any of us knew the magic formula to cut through and get the message across, we would have shared it around Tumblr like crazy and there would be miraculous conversion stories, the likes of which the world hasn't seen since the Book of Acts. But we don't know that secret formula. What I can tell you is this kind of outrage, even it feels good. I know it feels good. I've participated in it. I, I have. And I'm not just defending this because it's a Harry Potter movie. I'm not. I'm trying to tell you what I hear from people that would normally be open to a discussion on these issues, whose minds were immediately closed because of how we reacted, how we raged against the unseen movie, and how we libs and lefties always overreact. Yes, it's a stereotype. Yes, the snowflake is a stereotype. And I, I, oh, trust me, I understand that rage. And as I've said before, I've participated in it. But one of the things that I am striving to do with this podcast and with all of the work that I do going forward is find ways to actually message what I'm wanting to say better and to help us as a community do that as well. I, do, I don't think that this is successful. I don't think that this is helpful. I don't think that this helps anybody. I think it feels good. I think it may be cathartic. There may be a few that also see this point of view and who were already there or very close to being there for whom this will work. I, I can tell you now, no one in the red state that I live in will care. And that is a shame. That is a terrible, sad shame. And the few people that do will make fun of it and will bring it up to me and poke at me and try to trigger me so that they can get an angry lefty to prove their point. Because that's what conversations around here in the red state is like. And that's not good for any of us. And that's not going to solve the problem for any of us. We have to be better even when we don't know what that better looks like. I wish I had answers here. And if anybody out there feels like they do, please contact me and let me know because I would love to share the answer there. Because I don't think just being outraged is enough anymore. We've tried it. We've tried it for years and it hasn't gotten us anything except for more outrage on their side. And that's where this all has to stop. There's a quote I want to make here, but I feel that it would be insensitive, so I'm not going to do it, or it would be perceived as being insensitive, so I'm not going to do it. But we can't keep... I, I feel like we in fandom have gotten trapped in this echo chamber of rage, where the alt-right is mad because, oh, Star Wars actually cares about diversity a bit and is casting not just white people in all the roles. And... While other media may not be doing as well with the casting and may be upsetting people with the cast, this looks like people, uh, this looks like we can't make up our mind. 
I know it's not that, you know it's not that, but we have to do better. We have to find a way to do this better. Because frankly, and trust me, I'm one of the most lefty people you're going to meet on a lot of issues. And when this whole thing got started, I found myself literally rolling my eyes and going, here we go again. Because I knew it was coming. I didn't know when it was going to happen. and I didn't know who was going to start it. But I was waiting for it. No piece of media is perfect. No story is perfect. We should always strive for perfection. And that includes in how we practice our activism. I don't know. I wish I could, like I keep saying, I wish I could offer a suggestion on what that perfection looks like. But all I can say is from where I am standing and where I live, this controversy, like so many that have come around of late, has just made it harder for people like me to have conversations with even the well-meaning people around me that could possibly have eventually become allies. And I don't, I just, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. So if you have any ideas and you'd like to send them to me, head on over to anchor.fm, download the app, follow me. You can leave me a one minute message. Please keep it clean because if you don't, I won't use it on the show. I try to keep this episode episodes clean. I, I really would like to hear from you all on this issue because I think it's really important for us to have this dialogue with ourselves. I feel like ContraPoints recently had this with herself on her most recent video. And yeah, sometimes it can't just all be smash. And yes, sometimes it needs to be smash. I don't know where that line is. And I'm not saying necessarily that this wasn't one of those times, but uh, yeah. Anywho, hit me up on social media. You can find links to everything that I do at projectshadow.com. If you want to support this show and you think somebody would like this type of discussion, share with them. If you did like this and want to support me and the app that you're listening to me on allows you to rate the episode please, or the series, please do that. That does help me out a lot. If you want to support financially in whatever app you're listening to me at, on in the show notes or sometimes on the app itself there'll be a little button that says support on anchor if you click that you can support me at the one five or ten dollar a month levels those really do help a lot to help me keep this show going if you want to support everything that i do you can go over to patreon.com slash ce dorset and that supports everything including the fiction um yeah I, i really hope i didn't come off as condescending on this episode that was not my intention in any way shape or form i i'm watching discussions happening in my local community and in broader internet world and seeing such dramatically different conversation plays that they don't converse with the, like you can't bring arguments from one place into the other and i'm just trying to find a way to have an actual conversation well thank you for listening until next time don't forget to have the fun bye